Well, thanks for clicking on to the Sunday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Hope everybody has enjoyed their weekend overall. It has been quite an interesting weekend of weather, of course. We ended last work week with stormy conditions. We began the weekend on a fairly snowy note across particularly the high ground of the Highlands uh, on Saturday morning. And uh, this is a tweet that I, I put out just uh, a few hours ago. So uh, back on Friday afternoon, I, I frustrate myself because I... I do these videos and I have every intention of, um, you know, providing the best information possible with regards to what's going on. And of course, I've done the global weather and climate report yesterday, but I failed to make mention of about how mild Europe has been as well as other parts of the world. And on the same day that the temperature, um, the, the wind, sorry, um, exceeded 81 mile per hour, 10, which is in Rosshire, the second strongest wind gust since the site opened in 1992. <clears throat> it was only second to Inverbervie's 83 mile per hour, but we also had unofficial wind gusts, still accurate, still calibrated wind weather stations, but the only reason why it says unofficial is because it, it has to be a Met Office weather station. I kind of, in some respects, I kind of wish that um, it was a little bit more like other countries, including the United States, where it's not primarily Met Office weather stations that are deemed official readings. So, you know, we had a wind gust highly accurate at 101 mile per hour at uh, the Sea Life Station at Invergordon. Very exposed to that um, west to southwesterly wind on Friday morning, but nonetheless, we had some significant damage. But the official 81 mile per hour wind gust at Tain was in fact the second strongest on record. Uh, it, it was only surpassed by the wind gust of 82 mile per hour, so one mile per hour higher. And um, that was set back in, on the 9th of January 2015. So this of course was um, some of the wind damage I captured uh, on Friday morning. This tree blown over at a hotel and also we had of course... Uh, some blizzard conditions on the A9 uh, 24 hours later. But uh, I want to look at a couple of things uh, today. So uh, the very same afternoon that we've seen those strong wind gusts in the morning, uh, the temperature at Pershore uh, reached 17.2 Celsius, so remarkably mild conditions across uh, parts of England and Wales. And even today, the temperature's been up to 11 Celsius, and that's been a regular occurrence here in the north of Scotland uh, through the month of uh, February. It has been remarkably mild, of course, and pressure was uh, no lower than, you know, just over a 1,000 millibars up until that point where we had Storm Auto, Auto passed. We had the pressure drop like a stone from, uh, what, 1,017 millibars down to 986 millibars. And then once we've seen um, that system exit, the, the pressure uh, rose right back up into the, thousand millibar category once again so a very very quick decrease in pressure and then a, a, a rise thereafter but it's interesting this time this the the week just gone um a year past the uk recorded three main storms within a week and uh, i had a little bit of a look back at that remarkable week during February of 2022, we had almost the complete, in fact, we did have the complete opposite going on within the polar stratosphere. Back then, around a week ago uh, last year, we had a very, very powerful zonal mean wind circle in the Northern Hemisphere. We had a polar vortex that had a core temperature down into the, the minus 90s. And now we have just witnessed on the very same week that we had the three storms hit the UK, you know, within a seven day period, we've got the opposite. We've got a major sudden stratospheric warming taking place. So what a contrast in one week, a year later, um, across the British Isles. And this is really reinforces my reasons why I love weather and climate because we can get these huge variations. And in yesterday's video, I made mention about the extremes that we've seen this winter in, in you know, Japan, parts of Australia, where we're, we're seeing temperatures in the mid-40s and we're seeing record-breaking cold. 
uh, parts of Europe, um, parts of you know Asia in particular, you know China, Japan, South America, where we're seeing the you know monthly all time you know record cold, then record heat, then back to record cold. The the fluctuation this year, I think, has been very very noteworthy indeed, and uh, it just to me it's just amazing actually how uh, weather really operates overall. But let's have a look quickly at um this was Storm Malik. The end of January two thousand and twenty two was seen a wind gust in excess of a hundred and forty seven miles per hour. That was recorded. Up at um, I believe it was at um, Anak Moor weather station. Uh, Kern Gorm, in fact, one hundred forty-seven miles per hour. Kernwell one twenty. Fort William was one thirteen, but I'm not one hundred percent sure. I don't know if that Fort William actually constitutes more as Anak Moor, which is a nearby Monroe. Bulik Namba one hundred four. Glen Ogle ninety-eight miles per hour. Very powerful storm at the end of January two thousand and twenty-two. Then we had that run of three powerful named storms in the, in one week. So Dudley was the one that hit first, and that was between the 14th and the 19th of February. Pressure down the 965 millibars. We had wind gusts in excess of 100 miles per hour. Then Storm Eunice. And uh, if I look at this video here in particular, that is the video that I produced that talked about the fine details of meteorology coming together, you know, the various elements, the various levels within the atmosphere. If you haven't, do check that video out if you're interested in meteorology in, in any way, shape, or form. That storm, by the way, produced a wind gust at Needles Point on the west coast of the Isle of Wight, 122 miles an hour. That was a, an all-time England record. It actually surpassed the great storm of 1987 so storm eunice is born could england and wales be facing the worst hit since 1990 or 1987 uh so a lot of detail a lot of work was put into that that's literally just a year ago a few days ago that i produced this video it was actually the biggest hit of any video i've produced in the last what 13 years that i've been producing youtube videos I think it had 57,000 views, that particular video. I think that was one of the, the biggest hits. I think there might be one that was actually more than that. I'm not sure. But uh, looking at uh, Wikipedia here, you've got all these details represented. I actually have an article on marfogunweather.com as well, looking back at the past 30-plus years of storms that hit the UK. And I actually have every intention of updating that um, to present day. So that is my hope, actually, um, to, to update um, you know, the more, you know, the last five or six years of storms into that article to update it right up to the present day. But that week, uh, you know, uh, mid to late February last year was just remarkable. A uh, 200 plus mile per hour jet stream. We had a very strong polar vortex. Uh, all the ingredients came together for a, a, a huge barrage of Atlantic low pressure into the British Isles. We have got windy conditions across the northern half of the UK, but what a difference a year makes. So anticyclonic conditions have been dominating the UK. We've got parts of the south that have barely seen a drop of rain in the last month or so. Any kind of storminess has primarily been focused over the northern half of the UK, as explained at the start of this video. And of course, we do have more windy conditions to speak about over the course of tonight. The reason why, low pressure, deep over Iceland, strong area of high pressure, 1030 millibars on the southwest coast of the UK. That squeeze in the isobars across the north means that we've got gale force winds, not only this afternoon, but through the overnight tonight across the north. We also have a band of heavy precip coming in, as you can see here, seen by the model uh, during the early hours of uh, Monday morning here. So we're going to continue to see these winds blowing pretty hard during the overnight across the far north. Blustery elsewhere. Then as we progress through the course of tomorrow, it looks as if we're going to see this spread now of isobars, meaning the winds are going to relax somewhat. Looking at the GFS wind forecast, you can see here that as we progress through the course of today, the winds have increased. They're likely then to increase further 
over the course of this evening, uh, expecting wind gusts in excess of 115 kilometers per hour across the north. And I'm located right about here. And you notice here that we do have some fairly brisk winds um, really peaking probably around about three o'clock in the morning, according to the latest run of the GFS, at least anyway. Um, so you can see that here as we progress through the course of time, it looks as if 115 kilometers an hour is going to be the peak wind gusts. As we progress through the course of this work week, it looks as if we do have some interesting things to come. As we play through the sequence, you can see here more weather systems moving in during the middle portion of the week. But notice the area of high pressure. Instead of it being to the south of the UK, it's actually to the west of the UK. And of course, opens the door to something colder as we progress from Wednesday into Thursday. So high pressure to the west, low pressure to the east. We've got that wind coming in from a northwesterly direction, but nothing particularly cold to write home about anyway. And um, it looks as if we do have some wintry precipitation to speak about as we go into uh, Wednesday and Thursday here. And then you notice here that we start to see that area of high pressure kind of uh, build in a little bit more across the UK. But that's a fairly chilly look, if you notice here. If we look at the 850 temperatures here off the model, you can see here that uh, it is indicating some fairly colder across particularly in the north if we skip back just a couple of frames here you notice here that we don't have a great deal of cold we do have that initial push of cold air coming in during wednesday and thursday but uh, we don't have that connection from the far north into the uk we've basically got recycled air coming around that area of high pressure so it's not tapping anything from the far north so any kind of chillier at 850 but quickly becomes washed out as we start to pull that air in just simply off the Atlantic here. But then as we progress towards next weekend, it looks as if there might be something a little bit more noteworthy with low pressure over the far west of Russia, high pressure close to the UK. Do we start to see that polar air coming into the European pattern and then perhaps trying to pull and tuck in on the southern flank of the high so uh, that kind of remains open to question. Continue to play it through the loop here. And you notice here that um, the modeling does really kind of have eventually a mild uh, look, which is quite interesting because, of course, once we get towards the, first, the end of the first week of March, that's when we'll be starting to pay attention closely to what's taking place within the stratosphere, that two-week lag between the strap warming and indeed any kind of downwelling through the troposphere. We'll look in a little bit more detail in the next couple of days, by the way, with regards to the uh, the stratosphere, what's taking place, how much influence are we seeing down through the column. This is off the GFS and so I'll, I'll kind of quickly end with that because I've rambled on quite, uh, long enough, I think. But you notice here that as we play through the next few days, we've got these systems riding the northern flank of this uh, persistent area of high pressure across the UK and Ireland, keeping things mild. Notice here that as we press towards the 22nd, 23rd, we do have a little bit of high pressure, uh, a kind of brief shot of chilly weather. If you notice here uh, across the UK here, we've got this trough with the ridge to the west. Play Continue to play through the loop. What happens is we get that kind of uh, trough slides underneath the high and we may get something colder, as shown by the GFS model, uh, by the time we reach next weekend here. Now, interesting enough, this is off the GFS ensemble, like I say, but notice here the buildup of pressure towards the very end of the month. And pay close attention to that area of high pressure. Notice how the GFS ensemble sees it retrograding west and northwest up towards Greenland with that negative underneath here. That is the model now starting to pick up on the negative NAO pattern, probably both in conjunction with the MJO progression in the 8 and 1, as well as the stratospheric warming situation that we're seeing at this moment in time. But Europe very mild, the UK very mild overall. Do check out that video that I produced uh, just over a year ago that talks in detail about Storm Eunice. And uh, yeah, um, keep it right here on my YouTube channel. I do appreciate you watching as always. Enjoy the rest of your evening weekend and i'll see you hopefully again tomorrow with more bye for now